we're going to proceed with our day trip to Bern. It's an easy walk from our Hotel Balance across the River Royce to the train station. It's just about a quarter mile. Everything in Lucerne is within walking distance, so it makes it very easy to get around. There you see our hotel on the far banks of the river and the big flock of swans who live in the city. A view of the covered bridge again the next day when it's not raining. This is the Keppelbrücke. There's been a fire in 1993 on the Keppelbrücke. It's been partly damaged, but they're already busy rebuilding it. And by the time you get to Lucerne, it should look like this once again. It's the oldest covered wooden bridge in Europe. Dates back to the year 1333. Finding ourselves quickly in the train station, you can go there and buy your ticket the same day that you're traveling. They don't take seat reservations on the local train, so you don't have to worry about planning ahead of time. Just show up at the station about 30 minutes or so before departure, and these trains leave on time. Remember, we're in Switzerland. The trains are spotless. They perform beautifully. They're very comfortable and the windows pull down so you can enjoy a panoramic view as you travel along or just sit back in the smooth comfort and read your morning newspaper. It's a very scenic two-hour ride from Lucerne to Bern. Green rolling hills and distant peaks, glaciers up on the tops of some of the mountains, and the efficient Swiss train system will get you there right on schedule. We're passing through one of the more agricultural parts of the country. Surprisingly, Switzerland is more of an industrial country than an agricultural country. The trains also have got these rolling snack bars if you need just a quick sandwich or a cup of instant coffee. The main agricultural activity that we'll be seeing is simply grazing lands. There's also some orchards and produce and grains. Switzerland does manage to grow half of the food that it consumes, which is really quite an accomplishment considering that only 6% of the country is arable land. The rest of it is just too steep or too rocky. The Swiss love their hiking expeditions. All over the country you'll always see people young and old out for the day's hike. Switzerland is a very prosperous country despite a lack of natural resources. There's no mineral wealth, there's no oil, there's no gold. There's hydroelectric power. They do generate most of their own electricity through hydroelectrics. And they also have got the beautiful scenery, which is their greatest natural resource because it brings in the tourism dollars. And there's some lumber industry, careful selective cropping of the lumber, not any clear cutting, of course, in a nation like Switzerland. They take care of the resources that they do have. But the main resource is the people. The people of Switzerland are the workers in the manufacturing sector, working in the factories, working in the industry, and they are highly efficient workers, very productive. Here you see the typical settlement pattern where you have houses clustered in a village rather than scattered out over the countryside. And then the countryside is kept relatively open and available for the pasture lands and the farmlands. The Swiss economy faces additional challenges brought on by the isolated nature of the country. It's a landlocked nation and it's surrounded by mountains, so transportation is quite a challenge. And there is no oceans in which they can ship their goods away. So they have to compete with the other countries of Europe on an uneven footing. Plus, the living standard of Switzerland is so high that the wages are very high. A typical high school graduate goes not to college but to an industrial apprenticeship program and they'll be paid at least the equivalent of twenty thousand dollars a year right out of high school and they'll go through maybe a five-year apprenticeship program and after that time they'll be earning forty thousand dollars a year public school teachers in switzerland are paid an average of seventy thousand dollars a year it's the top salary for teachers in the world so you can see the high value they place on education it's part of the quality control of this country. They can't compete by lowering their prices. They compete by raising their quality. The short red train is typical of the trains that go through the steeper mountain passes, connecting the villages in the heart of the Swiss Alps.
Switzerland has an excellent network of railroads that tie the many towns and villages together. And where the trains don't reach, the Swiss postal buses do. And so public transportation can bring you just about anywhere in Switzerland, so you don't have to rent a car. But if you want that ultimate in personal mobility, of course, car rentals are fine, and they too will get you around on the excellent road system. Well, the trains have taken us from Lucerne to Bern in just under an hour and a half, and we arrive in the very modern train station of Bern. This is really an amazing station. Most Swiss stations in the big cities are, are very fine, and Bern is typical of the services offered in an excellent Swiss train station. There's showers, so you can take a bath, you can do your laundry, or you can pay somebody to do your laundry for you here at the laundromat. So if you're in the middle of a long train trip, you can get refreshed and you don't have to check into a hotel for a night for all these conveniences. Wash up and then make your next train connection and carry on with your trip. Or if Bern is your destination like it is for us today, there's other facilities in the train station that are most helpful. There's a very good information booth that has a lot of free brochures and you can talk to the people there and they'll give you some tips. Do you have any other um, suggestions what to see in here? Um, there's the Parliament House, the Clock Tower, the Cathedral, the Bear Pit, Rose Garden, this market here. Uh -huh. Do you sell any uh, book? Um, and as soon as you step foot outside the train station, the interesting sights begin. Bern is truly a beautiful city. It's one of the only cities that's on the UNESCO list of historic landmarks. As you'll see, there's covered arcades, there's old marketplaces, there's a lot of fruit and vegetable stands, a lot of cafes, wonderful shops. There's a convenient trolley that runs right through the center of town, so you can easily get from one end to the other in five or 10 minutes. It's a very compact urban center. Automobiles are not allowed on most of these pedestrian roads. And this is the main market square. You'll see the produce booths set up. There's a few souvenir booths here, but it's mostly for local residents. And there's the sidewalk cafes and many fountains, many public fountains scattered throughout this city. The trams are very quiet and very efficient. It's really a, a model system for urban public transportation. And of course, there's lots of bakeries. The Swiss love their breads and pastries and cakes and pies. Fantastic eating here. Right away, you see the distinguished characteristic of the city, which is the arcades, the arcaded sidewalks. Bern has four miles of arcades like this. And throughout it all, you'll find the fountains and the clock tower, the very famous clock tower in the distance there. All of the fountains were built in the mid-1500s, in the year 1545, and they were the main source of drinking water for the townsfolk. So every block or so is another public fountain, and this was a great gathering spot for the local people. Nowadays, the fountains and flowers and the quaint old buildings give Bern the atmosphere of a charming village, even though it's actually the national capital. It's a major city, it's involved in trade and agriculture, and especially politics as the home of the National Congress. It almost seems like time has stopped here, but this clock has been ticking since the 12th century. It's the famous clock tower, the Zeitglocken. In the midst of these ancient medieval buildings, you'll find all sorts of modern shops, flower shops, clothing stores, high-tech electronic stores, computers, camera shops, pizzerias, bakeries. It's just a fine spot, especially if it's a rainy day. The arcades will protect you very nicely. This is not a rainy day. This is the summertime. We're enjoying a beautiful walk through the city in the month of June. But even now, the arcades shelter us from the sun and create a very comfortable and cool atmosphere. There's really one main street in the town. It changes names several times. It's the Marktgasse, it's the Kramgasse, and it's the Gerechtigkeitgasse. 
lined with the arcades and the old cobblestone paving. And then we have the Byron Plots, which is the main market square of the city. So it's all very compact. And then the little side streets and alleys are quaint and curious to go strolling through. Of course, it's all very safe being the capital of Switzerland. Don't have to worry about security here other than the normal precautions. Very friendly place. Casual stroll through the main market, the Bar and Platz. Here you'll find a wide variety of fruits and produce for sale. Many of them shipped in from abroad from Northern Africa and the Middle East. And quite a few of the vegetables and fruits are homegrown right in the slopes of the Alps in Switzerland. Switzerland produces about half of its own food. There's a lot of restaurants all around the marketplace here. So if you don't want to just get some raw veggies and fruits for a picnic lunch, you can sit down at a cafe and enjoy a meal at a very reasonable price. Uh, of course, you can go to a bakery and get some bread, and you can go to a butcher store and get some cold cuts, so you can get some nice fresh carrots and make your own lunch and have a picnic. There's many parks in town, and the banks of the river provide several areas with viewpoints and benches you can sit down and have a nice picnic lunch. Here's some Swiss chard in Switzerland. And then we came across this interesting game right in the middle of the square. It had drawn a real lively crowd and some town characters here participating. So let's see if we can try and figure out what's going on with this game. It's not the normal chess set or checker set you might see in the games in the marketplaces of Switzerland. This is something different. <laughs> what is this game? Yeah. Sprech in English? Yes, it's a little bit. What, what is this game called? Oh. Wie heißt das Spiel dann? Nein, uh, Nine Stones Game. Nine Stones <laughs> Game. Yeah, Nine Stones Game. It's and like uh, how do you play it? What's the rules, okay. sir? The rules is you you must you must uh, you must have three of these uh, these stones in one line. In one line. Well, uh, the same color. Three in one line, the same color. You can you can move one place at a time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. When you have one, uh, three stones in one line, you can. One stone away from the other side. Yes. From from the other from the other color. <laughs> Public games like this create very special social opportunities beyond the obvious pleasure that the people are having and the players are enjoying. It's a way of bringing strangers together and sharing a common experience and chatting and joking about what's going on and breaking the ice between people and just creating a more social cohesion in that society. The big chess sets are found everywhere in the cities of Switzerland along with the checkerboard games and the delightful outdoor cafes that you'll find of course throughout Europe in the summertime. Prices are quite reasonable here. A full lunch would run you about 10 to 12 dollars, or you could just have a light snack for maybe 3 to 4 dollars. Swiss cuisine is kind of heavy on the sausages and the potatoes, but you'll find a great variety, especially in these larger cafes. They have a real cosmopolitan menu with Italian items, French items, sandwiches, hot dogs, hamburgers, and french fries. The outdoor stalls not only have fruits and produce, but all sorts of knickknacks and tourist souvenirs, clothes, luggage, bags, a wide variety of things you can pick from, and it's all outdoors, which makes it that much more pleasant to shop. And here you might find a lot of unique items because many of them are handcrafted by the seller themselves. So you'll have unique works of art, there's paintings for sale, there's jewelry, little earrings, things you just won't find any place else. Another one of the many fountains in the city. Still functioning. The water is still drinkable in these public fountains. 
Of course, you'll find the water, the tap water all over Europe is drinkable. You don't have to worry about bottled water. It's a very clean and civilized place. More pastries. Seems like there's a bakery on every corner here in Bern. And chocolates. The Swiss chocolates are reputed to be the finest in the world. And their pastries, ditto. Each of these fountains has a characteristic statue on top. There's the ogre fountain. There's a fountain of a bear dressed in armor you'll see in a moment. You can take a horse ride if you like, horse and carriage ride through the small town. Cars are restricted in this zone, so you have to have a special permit on your automobile to be able to drive in here. It's just for those who either live or work in the immediate area of the old town. Otherwise, it's just for public transit. The electric overhead buses are very quiet, very comfortable. Something it would be nice to have in more of our American cities is electric buses. No pollution, no noise, very efficient, and very easy to maintain them as well, too. Bern proudly displays its medieval heritage. The city was first constructed, first founded in the year 1191 and it's been growing ever since. Here's that bear inside the armor. The name of this fountain is Zeringerbrunnen, and each of the fountains has its own name, such as Samsonbrunnen and Gerechtigkeitsbrunnen, the Fountain of Justice. There are several museums in the city, including the Museum of Fine Art, which holds the world's largest collection of paintings by Paul Clay, who was a native of the area. And there's paintings by Cezanne and Matisse. There's a historical museum and the Museum of Natural History. And there's also several beautiful churches. This is the smaller Protestant Gothic church. And there's also a larger Gothic cathedral just across the river. Beautiful interior preserve from the 15th century. Gothic rib vaulting on the ceiling, stone vaulting throughout. And just around the corner, we're back on the main street and there's another cafe. Every other block, you can sit down at an outdoor cafe and enjoy the sights and have a snack or a big meal. Arcades are also found on several back streets, and the rooftops of the city are another one of the outstanding architectural features of Bern. There's quite a bit of uniformity in the architecture, dating mostly to the 15th and 16th century, these poster shots of the city show how the town is surrounded by the river Ara, which wraps around it and gives it that compact, cohesive medieval form. The buildings are located all quite close to each other. This architectural harmony is one result of the social equality that has pervaded this society over the years. The river formed a fine natural defensive barrier that enabled the town to grow and thrive during the medieval and later periods, and Bern became an important military power and gained control over large parts of the country stretching all the way to Geneva and south into the Bernese Oberland, which is where we'll be heading shortly. As we board the public bus, you can buy your tickets right here from the machines, insert the proper coins, the instructions are clearly marked on the machine. Then you pull out your ticket, you board the tram. It's another one of these comfortable electric trams. And when you board, you validate your ticket in the little ticket machine on board. You'll find these articulated electric trolley buses in all the main cities of Switzerland, and it provides wonderful public transit. The bus is extra long, and it bends in the middle. We have a few of these in Honolulu but these are run by overhead electric wires, so they're very quiet and they're very clean. Of course, then you do have the overhead wires there, so there's a bit of a trade-off, but all in all, it's a great way of getting around the city and provides a smooth, comfortable ride as well. Some final views of the arcades of this city of Bern. Four miles of arcades make this the largest collection of covered sidewalks to be found any place in Europe which is really quite a distinction. And the city government has done a fine job of preserving the arcades over the last 500 years. 
There have been several fires in the 14th century. There was a fire in the 18th century, and the town was rebuilt in the old style, and it's been beautifully maintained ever since. I hope this brief look at the capital of Switzerland has made you interested in visiting Bern yourself someday. It's a fine experience. There's several hotels in town. There's also the guest cottages, the guest houses. There's four-star hotels and on down to modest budget hotels. And it's surrounded by beautiful countryside. Because of its central location, there's numerous day trips you can take out from Bern particularly when you head south into the mountainous Bernese Oberland, as we're doing now. We're heading down towards Interlaken, passing several beautiful lakes along the way. It's just about a one-hour ride on the trains from Bern to Interlaken, and you go through the beautiful little village of Spitz on Lake Thum, and shortly you find yourself in this famous resort town of Interlaken. In this case, we're just going to be changing trains and continuing on our journey back to Lucerne, where we're spending the night. Switzerland is so compact that you can easily do this one day, go to one town, stay there perhaps a few days, and enjoy day trips out from there, change cities, see a different part of the country, so that within a week you can see most of this great nation.